On today's episode, here's a solution to the auto industry chip shortage. The episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. If you've ordered a new car or light truck to celebrate the passing of the COVID-19 pandemic, congratulations. If you're lucky, you'll get it soon. Many buyers will not as their cars are either not being built or are sitting in storage lots awaiting the critical integrated circuits they need to operate. Now there's a global chip shortage, and despite the usual Monday morning quarterbacks that pop up on MSNBC or Bloomberg, no one saw this coming. Put simply, when COVID hit, auto sales tanked, but personal electronics sales skyrocketed as people adjusted to working remotely and in isolation relied more on personal electronics for contact and entertainment. Now the semiconductor industry responded, switching manufacturing capability to consumer electronics. While auto demand is back, so is the demand for chips, except that they're simply not available. Why? Well, a major reason is that it's incredibly expensive to switch integrated circuit manufacturing processes from one type to another, especially if it involves a change in the fundamental technology. If the automaker doesn't need leading edge 5 nanometer ICs, it doesn't mean that the industry can flip a switch and start 7 nanometer production again. For the auto industry, this has ripped the wallpaper off the just-in-time manufacturing system, exposing the old paint underneath. Some manufacturers, notably Toyota, have been carrying unexpectedly high inventories of ICs and they can weather the shortage as well. Other manufacturers like Ford are assembling incomplete vehicles and storing them awaiting the ICs. Even lower volume manufacturers like Tesla are affected. So in essence, we have a fragile, critical and global supply chain with lots of inertia and very high startup costs, basically a dry forest looking for a spark. Now it's easy to point fingers after the fact, but more than one industry expert has questioned whether the risk to production caused by heavily decentralized manufacturing really saves money in the long run. Others argue that it's simply not decentralized enough and that a truly diverse manufacturing base would, like the internet, be resilient and resistant to overall system disruption. I think that the major part of the problem is a serious lack of standardization in the auto industry. Fuels, lubricants, and basic fastener sizes were standardized years ago, as were essentials like metal compositions and things like O-rings, gasket materials, and lamps. Now, given the relative simplicity of most automotive control functions, particularly in body control modules, compared to things like video games, it's difficult to believe that a global automotive industry working group couldn't establish a standardized chipset for driving most automotive functions using previous generation technology like 7 nanometer, which is widely available. Now, individual manufacturers could still write their own code to differentiate their products, but it's difficult to understand why basic control modules can't be as interchangeable as the fuses that protect them. Now, the chip shortage may cost the automotive industry worldwide $60 billion in lost revenue. With the consolidation, there are now fewer, bigger manufacturers. Maybe it's time for some engineering VPs to get together over a cold one and ask themselves why everyone needs a different kind of shovel to dig the same hole. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.